Warning, all views expressed in this video are from the creator and do not represent the opinions of any other company or individual. Content shown within is intended for entertainment purposes only and no infringement is intended. Enjoy! <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Perch, and I want to talk about movies for a minute, and specifically comic book movies, and something that gets under my skin a lot, because you hear this statement from time to time that movie audiences are not the same as comic audiences. They're different, they don't cross over, people don't go to the movies and go to get comics, and that's just ridiculous to think otherwise. And I, I, this, this statement bugs me because it it's so patently dumb on, on the surface that there's not really a defensible argument. It's not like saying, well, you know, what this person actually means is, is this, or, you know, it's, it's true if you look at it from this angle. The only truth to that statement is that the movies and the comic books have become so disconnected that a lot of audiences who go to the movies don't even think that a comic exists or, or maybe it's long canceled or it's old or it's some property that is long since dormant and dead. And I think that's, that's a true statement and it's a really pathetic one, particularly when, you know, Marvel studios for the majority of its life had an opening that had the little comic flipping pages and they showed comic art and it was, I mean, it's clearly comics. Even people who don't read comics still have a recognition of Stan Lee and who he is and what he's done. So this idea that that movie audiences just had no connection at all to comics and and it was just ridiculous to even try is it's just false. It's just there's no there's no sorry, there's no debate about that. Now what is true is that like I said, the movies and the comic books have gotten disconnected over time. So the audiences who are going to see the movies, if they did go into a comic store and they go into comic stores all the time, you see this happen constantly, the comics on the shelves bear no resemblance to what they saw in the theater. And, and this has been a passion argument I've had with people, um, creators and fans alike, other shop owners, and that is... I don't think that comics should try and duplicate the movies, meaning comics shouldn't be a glorified adaptation of the movies. It would make no sense. Movies draw from storylines of comics. So I, it's just they shouldn't try and copy each other page for page. But if you are going to the movie and the movie is popular and you pick up the comic book, then it should feel spiritually the same. And the best example of this, I would say, is as you know, Miles Morales, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And what really was a, a huge missed opportunity with the movie and the comic in that other than the cover and the covers of the new relaunched comic do a good job, the inside of the comic, it, it, it struggles to feel like the movie uh, to me. Now, of course, that's personal opinion. And the most recent issue, this would be the, the March issue, did a better job of trying to capture some of that feeling. But you know, with a hit on its hands, it would have been smart to stylistically with the, with coloring and with art and with as much as possible, make that book feel like the movie. This movie is very stylistically uh, new and noteworthy. So make a comic book that, that reflects that. So people who enjoy the movie can go into a shop, can see this comic book. The comic book feels like what they just watched and enjoy. They go home, they continue that experience, they keep reading, and eventually they branch out into other things. And I, I think, you know, it's it's hard to point back. You can't go back in history and say, well, in the 80s, they did a great job of this. Because, you know, you could argue they did. The Superman movies did feel a little bit more like the comics. Batman, eh, maybe. But the movies were just at a different level. And so were the comics. It was it would be harder to connect the two. Uh, there were a lot of adaptions going on. It just it wasn't quite the same. But why? Why in the world would you look at a property like the Avengers or by striking gold or something like uh, like Wonder Woman did or Aquaman, and you turn to the comics, and the comics are in the middle of a storyline that just has nothing to do at all with the movie? I mean, look at 
kind of current Aquaman and ignore the Kelly Sue and if you like her as a writer or not, whatever. You you look at the movie and kind of the over the top action stuff, just crap go flying at the wall from every direction, and that the kind of the character and the humor and everything else. And then you go to the Aquaman comic, and it's Aquaman's lost his memory. There's a lot of kind of soul searching, some unrecognizable characters to people who watch the movie, and it just it feels like a completely different book. And if it didn't have Aquaman on the cover, you you'd not really recognize the fact that you're you're watching something that's relating to that movie. Now, I don't think the movies automatically win, but the movies are bringing in a really large audience the comics don't have, and it's an audience that they deeply covet. It's from the right demographics, it's it's they've got disposable income, and it's an opportunity to say somebody who spent $10 watching a movie, seeing some exciting property, now gets to go and live out a year more subscription of comics and hopefully read other things. So the, the connection is there. It's a market you want, but time after time, you look at Wonder Woman. You've got uh, G. Willow Wilson, and if she's writing Wonder Woman, you have a movie. The two, again, they just they, they don't feel like, like they're the same thing at all. James Robinson before her, these these comics don't line up. If you take the Avengers, they're going through this storyline with Thanos. What does Marvel do? They they kill Thanos. Okay, I mean, what? It's almost as if they're trying to make comics that that bear no resemblance to the film. And I've talked to a lot of creators who feel really frustrated, particularly at Marvel, that Disney is is tying their hands and that there's these mandates that come down and. You know, we have to make the characters look a certain way and highlight other things because we have to line them up with the movies. And and I've heard that complaint, and I've heard, um, you know, I've seen some evidence that there is truth to that. There is some guidance for synergy. And yet, and yet, you know, the Avengers is going into a Thor, War of the Realms type storyline with uh, fighting vampires, and Blade is there. While they're capping off the end of a you know ten plus year saga of movies with Thanos and the Infinity War, okay, is that is, again is that really the connection you want to make? Um, now, credit where credits due. Captain Marvel, at least there was an attempt to say, all right, uh, we have Captain Marvel here, and she's been through a million and one changes and several relaunches and everything else. But we're going to do it again, and we're going to do the secret origin of Captain Marvel. We're going to get an artist that at least tries to draw the character like Brie Larson. So I will give them some decent credit for that. The Captain Marvel movie, if kids, adults, anyone goes to see that film and they go into the store, they can pick up, you know, Secret Life of Captain Marvel, that that little event series. And there is a connective feeling there. There's a uh, one leads to the other kind of feel for that movie. That's good. Now the, the ongoing title it's, uh, you know, we got Captain Marvel, and in the very first episode issue here, uh, we're going to go ahead and take her, and we're going to throw her into a parallel dimension with a bubble and have a bunch of kind of Mad Max-looking Captain Marvel uh, friends. <laughs> okay, again, it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's scored right before the movie, and then you relaunch her ongoing series and immediately thrust her into an unrecognizable situation for people who are coming out of the, the theater. And, and, you know... Hey, personal preference, and I'm not even saying these stories are bad. I, I'm not saying that at all. You, know, you may like them, you may not, whatever. I'm just saying in terms of the connective tissue between movie and comic, it's not there. And it's not, there's not even an attempt for it to be there. And it's, it's a loss. I, I'm, you know, again, it goes back to kind of your philosophy. I will tell you because I've heard it on a weekly basis. And in some cases when the movie's real popular, like definitely with Spider-Verse, a daily basis, of people, parents usually, with kids coming in, wanting to pick up something that is like the movie. And what happens is their outlet for these things more and more are to go to a Target or a Walmart and pick up the, you know, movie tie-in books, either the storybooks or coloring books or whatever it happens to be, that are done by licensors, that are not done by the publishers. And those are one-and-done books. It's not building up a love for the character. It's not building up a commitment to subscribe and and live with that for a long time. And that's that's it's just a giant missed opportunity. So, you know, to recap, just to be clear, 
Yeah. I'm not saying comic books have to warp themselves to be exactly like the movie. I think that's not even possible to do in any kind of reasonable way. I'm saying that comic books should make an attempt to at least bridge the gap between the two. Maybe you can do it with a storyline, like Life of Captain Marvel. Good credit there. They did. Or artistically, like, you know, this, the current Miles Morales Spider-Man does have the covers that fit. You know, and thank goodness, you know, Marvel didn't decide to go with calling him, you know, Ghost Spider or some other crazy name or Spider, I guess. You know, they at least kept the the name of the book resembling the movie. But, you know, the covers are there artistically, but the inside is not. The story is not. Uh, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, neither cover nor story, no art, nothing resembles uh, the books there. So there's there's a lot that can be done, uh, a lot that's not being done. It just falls into the camp of missed opportunities. So that's that's kind of my quick two cents on movies and comics and why the two should go together. And again, if you're Marvel and you're publishing, you know, 80 books a month more, then you're telling me you can't have one book that you just put some effort toward really connecting the movie to the comic with the attempt to draw in readers, get them hooked and sell them on more subscriptions. You can't have a Captain Marvel where she's doing the Mad Max thing and simultaneously something that, you know, why not publish two Captain Marvel books? I mean, whatever. That's that's the idea. So anyway, there you go. That's my little bit. Thanks for listening.